And now, it's time for this week's three song rock shocker. Two in your ear, one in your rear.
Bill's half man, half chandelier. 84 months in and a random Wednesday, killed it, cut the code. The package of papers put in my hand as they asked me to go. When I left for the bed, did I get my hand? Cause I'm part of an army. 67 soldiers and I'm honored, they honored me. since 2012. gentlemen and welcome to the new and improved london indie underground london's only independent music broadcast showcasing yeah. some of our area's most talented artist bands and personalities dear lord we made it we're in barely oh fully Completely. let me tell you the last couple of days around here have been pretty crazy but uh you know i want to thank uh i want to thank the brown guy over there hey that guy mr ajay Who's, uh, who's been a godsend, and he's been working on making us look good while I've been working on the functionality. You might have seen some of the posts and pictures that, uh, that we've been posting here. And yeah, it's, uh, it's oh. been pretty hectic. Those who have been following along will know that uh, we moved, I guess, just over a week now, and, and today kicks off the official first Indie Stream podcast in our lo new location, same building, uh, but now we're at the 538 Adelaide Street North entrance, and uh, today we've opened our doors to uh, to a studio audience. We've got a couple of people there in the other room that are anticipating the performance of our band that's joining us on the couch now, the Unreal. The real. In in yes. addition to uh, a yeah. member of Baptized in Blood and Mr. <laughs> uh, Greg Hatchett. 
First time on it. The first time? Yep. First time watcher? I, well, I've watched it a billion times, but I've never been on it. <laughs> Well, welcome. That's funny because they haven't done a billion podcasts yet. <laughs> well, well, you know, over exaggerating. You know yeah, he's, yeah. Watched, he's watched it a whole bunch of times. He's never been in the middle of it. No, nope. the thick, yeah, the thick of the action. Edie, you Instagramming this? This is getting way too. My real. Instagramming this. Is, this, is, this is getting way too real. <laughs> it's like a bukkake. You know, you know, watch check, check. Time. It's not a, a front, front like this. I know. I didn't mean to do that. No, Hello. Okay. They got video now on Instagram, so you should probably Instagram this. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, I guess Vine is going to be dead now. No, okay. Vine just came out with a new update today. They did, eh? Yeah, so I don't know. I deleted it. 12 seconds? I don't know. I deleted it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Case in points. Really yeah. winning. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh! Exactly. So thanks for tuning in today, folks. My name is Jimmy James. Uh, if you're tuning in for the first time, uh, what we're all about here at London Indie Underground is showcasing talent from our area, southwestern Ontario, and music that you might not have heard Otherwise, you might have seen the, uh, the Metro article where I was talking about you know, how this whole thing came about as a bit of, uh, you know, born out of frustration. There's so much talent in the city and, you know, uh, some coverage, but in my opinion, certainly not enough. And so we kind of started this thing off to, uh, to do what we could to, you know, to, to give light to the many great bands and people at work in the background uh, trying to bolster our scene here. And, and I truly believe, and I've said this a million times, that we're really on the cusp of something. Uh, something special and I think uh, one of the things that really emphasized that for me was this past weekend out in Cam Lackey uh, with the festival Greg that uh, that, that you had put on with uh, with Dan Tyson that was a party, man. and Blair Grant and you know certainly <laughs> there were a number of people that were involved to make that thing a success but uh, not limited to the bands that performed and I think there were about 20 of them right yeah, yeah there was uh, 22 bands over two days uh, just an unreal like amount of uh, of help, pardon the pun. Uh, pun intended. Uh, yeah, these guys joined us. Uh, a lot of no bands fun. that have been on your show joined us, and um, you know, I had just so much help and so much support that I just felt, um, you know, a sense of, you know, it warmed my heart. You know, what I mean, like I've, I, I know what you're doing here, and I, it, I'm sure you get the same feeling. Um, I, d I definitely do. Yeah, I definitely do. Yeah. It was a good feeling and a great party, and you know it's just the beginning. So uh, we're certainly, gonna take it up. certainly, what this. what a weekend! And, and the thing that I really took away from that, two things. Uh, number one, waking Soggy up. Drawers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three things, but but two things that waking up the next morning, mm -hmm. and you wouldn't even you couldn't even tell that there was a party that had happened. No, I know everybody was respectful and and, and collected their own garbage and threw all the empties and in, in where where they should have went and uh, very clean party. Uh, for the most part. How much did you guys get for empties? Uh, we had 3,000 empties, so we gave uh, that 300 I bucks. I only account for 1,000. <laughs> I know. Just <laughs> joke. Uh, 300 <laughs> bucks went to the property owner, Paul Kingston. Can't thank him enough for letting us have that happen on his property. So Yeah. Uh, actually, he wanted the field rolled, so it wasn't. he didn't have to bounce around on his... Uh, on his lawnmower so much okay. so we're gonna put that money towards that are you guys gonna host it there uh, next week? uh it depends on how big it gets we're yeah. i'm really want to step it up like quite a bit yeah. um we did have a couple noise complaints later at night so i don't know if it's gonna work but i'm trying to get some headliners to draw some people in sure. so uh, the, i want everybody who was a part of it this year to be a part of it next year for sure was there uh, one we'll have multiple well? stages going on no, there was one last no this, this, this is, is the, the first, first one? one yeah oh wow, that's pretty impressive though was yeah, the was noise complaint though? I think it was the fireworks that were at the end of that, the night. And I was kind I of, called we it were in a part of that. We left. <laughs> we left that night and we called it in as a joke. The cops got me, called uh, and I didn't know and we just started lighting them off. Me, By the time they showed up, we were. Here. But they, yeah. were, they weren't even big ones. Like, no, it was just like. <laughs> crack! Yeah. <laughs> Never trust Torrance with Cops are here! Yeah. Lights them off like, okay, all right, the sorry. Time. You know, it's only 11.15. I didn't think, you it's know, people were so anal. Lights it off and runs away. The tornado was out that night? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a young cop. He didn't really care. He just had to <laughs> show up. Just yeah. to say you showed Other up. Other than that, there was no dicks, and uh, yeah, really I, didn't, I didn't. I, I didn't show up. I wasn't there. <laughs> so. Actually, well, that's why you didn't come, it, right? It was, told dick, you ahead it was time. dick free, and I, I was like, "Fuck that shit." <laughs> no, it was true. Didn't come? It was true. It was a great community of people. Just I think, me. and a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of great bands. Yeah. Well, the other good thing about it is that it was like what? How many people? 
Uh, about 300 came through the door through yeah, the whole yeah. weekend. Yeah, 300 thousand. Yeah. Everywhere you looked, it was a familiar face. You know, yeah. So it was almost like a. And it was a, it was an exclusive event, <laughs> and that's what made it awesome. And some band said, "Yeah, I didn't know. Like, I knew two people there, but I made so many friends when I was, you know, when I got yeah. there." And I was yeah. like, "That's what it's all about, right? Like that's uniting bands that maybe never heard each other." Yeah. There was so many different styles too. Everything from singer songwriter to metal. So I made a couple friends, Greg. Yeah. I'm sure you did. Yeah. The great sight was the next morning. You're, you're, so you're the, a social guy. The Gypsy Ghosts were uh, went and played that evening. Yeah. I heard were they, they, were they the headliner? The they were the headliner. No, they, they, were, they finished the the they Saturday night. Okay, off. so yeah, they. To see a mushroom <laughs> until four in the I can't comment on that, but but <laughs> what I can comment no on is there. So there was a community tent there, and it was this big, the big dome tent. Yes. And, yes, and I thought it was awesome because yeah, up above. you guys had you guys had glow sticks. We had glow sticks illuminating this little community tent, and there was a, yeah. like a almost like a little drum circle going on with like a couple guitars. And yeah, exactly, and, and that remote, went uh, on until like four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And then I woke up the next yeah. morning and I saw a gypsy passed out on the grass. Who's, yeah, who's well, there was like a bunch of gypsies yeah. passed yeah. out on the grass. Yeah, yeah. oh, like Tarn's the whole entire band. Is no, no, just one, I don't know. All, I don't know all of their names, but one of them. His, it was his pants were around his ankles, <laughs> and he was passed out hardcore. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, that went on until four in the morning, and the, and the guy who owned that tent it was pretty funny because at one point I was sitting underneath it, you know, getting a little out of the the sun a little bit, and I, I you know, I turned. You were eating the, mushrooms, were you? No, I was not. But I turned to I turned to uh, to somebody that's sitting on a chair. I'm like, whose tent is this? And they're like, Dude, are these? I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, you know, this guy pops up and he's like, Yeah, it's my tent. And I'm like, Oh, cool. Well, thanks for letting us chill out. And he's like. That's why I bring him in. You want to have a party? Put up one of these tents and people will come. And it so worked. Yeah. So build, it was, build it and they will come. Yeah, yeah. It was our little field of dreams there. You know? like yeah. It was, it was a was rager at midnight something. and we had to get out of there. I already let loose the goose by midnight. So. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Nice. Joel. Thank Mr. You. Joel Fenley here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Classying up my podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Just, Just letting, 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 letting everybody know that I'm still alive. I'm here. You're here? I'm queer. All right, well, let's do uh, let's do a bit of a roll call then, perhaps for the people that are tuning in for the first time. So, joining me, Mr. Brendan Eady, hi, a regular fixture here on the podcast, and uh, also uh, Brendan and I co-host a radio show on CHRW every Friday from three thirty to six p.m. I haven't seen you in a few, man. No, I uh, unfortunately didn't make it out to Camp Lackey this weekend because I was too busy DJing and getting no wasted dicks. at a wedding. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I was going to come up on the Sunday. Dusty's and, uh, wedding, right? And then Dusty, I just did. yeah, Dusty from yeah. Truck on a Rules wedding. Yeah. Uh, it was a wedding. It was a. It was a wedding. It was a wedding. It was a wedding. But yeah, have you recovered? You shotgun wedding. It was actually shotgun, shotgun wedding. wedding. Yes, it was yeah, a shotgun it was. wedding. Uh, yeah, I recovered. It took me a couple of days. Yeah, it yeah. took a couple of days for us. Still days. Yeah, well, we were supposed to hang out there, and then I didn't hear from you, and then I heard you were hurting, and then I was hurting too, so it was all good. Yeah, well, I, mean, I had every intention of going, and I did not feel good until about seven thirty or eight that evening. So then I started drinking again and went to call the office, and uh, then I was done until this morning. The rest is I want to know how Grady yeah, felt this, that morning. He had to work the next morning. Grady was and shit he canned was by <laughs> three in the afternoon when we showed up. Grady's well, shit canned right now. I was having I was having <laughs> a conversation <laughs> with him this the afternoon. Asking, festival leave. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> fucking Grady. He's sweating. He's sweating over there. Yeah, he, Grady's in the corner. If you can't see him. Yeah. What was that? Actually, <laughs> come. <laughs> <laughs> so, also joining us on the couch, uh, Mr. Dan Schultz from the sure band Sure Shot Schultz. Sure Shot Schultz. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> a nickname he gave himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just right now. The al- just hey, the Alabaska it. Slammer. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, the uh, uh, Kelly Goosecock. Keep coming. <laughs> Keep coming. Keep coming. Rin Tin Tin. Anywho. I'm done with this. So, I was really hoping the that, you know. Gummy worm. <laughs> the 5 o'clock AM Gummy Worm. Oh. <laughs> oh. With a. With, with toothpicks attached to it. Yeah. Too far. It's, it's, been, it's been licked a few okay, times. Yeah. Too far. Mr. Too far. Joel. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Joel Fenley. Fenley from Baptizing Blood. I'm Joel. Uh, next. Next. <laughs> Mr. Josh Torrance oh, from Fargo. the Unreal. Josh Torrance. And Baptized. Slash the tornado. Baptizing Blood. Unreal. The Baptizing Blood? Unreals. Uh, bro. The Unreals. All right, sorry. Fuck, you guys are high. <laughs> I'm the most sober I've ever been in my entire life. I right believe this it. Moment. Me too, actually. <laughs> yeah. hey, this, I'm this so glad. I'm so glad we're hey, doing hey. this on opposite day. That's me. 
Wow, I picked a. This is the most bunch sobering experience to have on of my, my first life. podcast back. That's a loud couch. Welcome yeah, back. Yeah, well, Welcome it's just back. like I'll yeah. just try. I'll just turn my mic off and just let you guys go. <laughs> I was sincerely Zach is uh, really tall, about to become a father. Uh, brown hair, yeah, yeah. brown really? beard, yeah. and uh, no way. She's, lots of tattoos. Uh, she's coming along. She's getting bigger every day. When's getting... it gonna drop? Huh? When's it gonna drop? How yeah. eloquent. Any time. Shit's after the next... gonna hit the fan in a couple weeks. <laughs> well, she's gotta, you know, come on. DJ bring that the end of August, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully she goes until then, but I got a feeling that we might end up a little early. Do you know what it is? It's a little girl, man. It's a little girl. I hope we have matching birthdays. Yeah. (laughs) No, we're excited, man. Good day. Yeah. Excellent. It's gonna be a gonna be a trip, trippy ride. Be uh, uh, definitely be a life change. (laughs) What are you gonna do? Maybe hold off till October. Shot Schultz starts hitting on her. (laughs) Come on, shit. Hey, Sure Shot Schultz won't be alive by then. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be Danny. Sure Shot Schultz is pieced out. He'll be locked up by then. You're older than 27. Daniel Schultz. Yeah. 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 Buddy, Danny. I'm still 23 every night. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> well, we already we kind of went yeah, to we, kinda, we went to Greg. We already went right off of yeah. the top, but. Uh, all right, well, let's get some music. We'll come back with some conversation about things that are happening in our market. We're going to share some news with you. And coming up at the top of the hour, 9 o'clock, the Unreal are going to perform. Uh, first performance here in our new facility. If you've not seen it yet, we've got a full stage setup. You'll see it on camera when we switch to it, uh, when they take the stage. I think it's pretty cool. We've got a foosball table on the other side. We've got hey, a lounge, some couches, gauntlet, projector. Gauntlet hooked up yet? No, actually, there's a, we were going to pick up the gun. I'll let him tell you about that. Where's the Galaga machine? Yeah, you know what, dude? I would love one. <laughs> no like shit. Come down ask, here and take me out on foosball. Like he here, has yeah. a full collection. He has an absolute collection. Nerd! <laughs> Nerd! It's okay. I wish my bedroom was yours. Whoa. What? Oh, that's Whoa. Oh. Trippy. Oh, that's not my bedroom. That's oh, sorry, your <laughs> Now time for a commercial. <laughs> All right, so let's yeah. check out a track here. So I'm going to flip to a band... Uh, Coincidentally, that just uh, played, and I talked about uh, one of them passed out in the grass. Uh, this is Gypsy Ghost with Big Brother here on the London Indie Underground. Big cannon. Four grand. Big. <laughs> Let's play. 
Metro 4 with disease here on the London Indie Underground. Before that, good old Gypsy Ghosts, which uh, we booked them, actually. Thanks yes. to you. Yes, sir. You, uh, so you came here yesterday, Grady. This is Matt Grady, ladies Hi and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Uh, head engineer from uh, Emac Studios and uh, also a member of uh, Tandem Eagle. Yes. Excuse me? Tandem fucking Eagle. Sorry. And possibly Kyle Eastner. I mean, he's been playing a couple shows. Uh We'll see where that goes. Yeah. And tonight he's not every member of the Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's a Man, band, you're everywhere band right now. Slut. I'm a big band slut tonight. <laughs> oh, most nights. And you brought some merch with you today. I did, actually. Uh, we got it today. We got it this morning. Oh, I want a shirt. Yeah. Uh, it's Let's right beside it. Mr. Edie here. All right. How much? Ten bucks a shirt, five bucks oh. a koozie. Oh, those are there koozies. You go. Yeah, we got koozies. Tandem Eagle koozies? Yeah. Would you like one for your beer? Yes. Would you grab Mr. Hatchet a koozie? Can I have, Can I have one too? Yeah. Koozies. I'd people. like a koozie too. Yeah. Let's koozie it up. They're in there. They're in there. Huh. All day. Coming out of you hot. You have to grab it off my wing. Oh, that's. Sweet. So I was going to say that you showed up here yesterday and you brought with you a care package. Yes. From the, the Gypsy, Gypsy Ghosts <laughs> were very kind to send tidings to Jimmy via myself because I was kind of doing the rounds. I was sort of in a post lackey days. Carrier Eagle? Yeah, I was the Carrier Eagle. <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I sort of, uh, you know, I was kind of in a bit of a haze at Post Lackey, and like I said, I was pretty useless. Where are we all? So I figured, you know, what's the best thing I can do with my day? A little networking, how about? Yeah. And uh, I went and saw Jim and Andy, and those guys were looking for their shame wows. <laughs> wow. And they didn't find them, so they, they made a little. Up? They were cleaning up the shame as best they could. <laughs> Andy asked me if I ever get an impending sense of doom, and I just said, "I know where you're at. <laughs> I know exactly where you oh, are." You got the fear. You got, the, got fear. the fear hard. You had it hard. <laughs> so, but they gave uh, they gave me something to bring to Jimmy. And uh, why don't you tell them? It was uh, it was well crafted. It was yeah, very clever. Uh, let's hear it. So it was uh, a tawdry um, Jewish. Um, I believe think it was. I was believe it was Thai. Was it Thai? I, I thought maybe it was Jewish. No, there was well, some. anyway, what, whatever it was, it was uh, like taken from a girly magazine, although it's a, a censored one. Mm. So the, all the bits were covered and stuff. But it was these pictures of these women in in this various spreads, uh, censored, yes. and then two little clamshells uh, with a string that apparently is a makeshift uh, little bikini top, which man. Maybe. How can you not like that? And a sticker, and a button, and a card. Yeah. How does it fit? I haven't tried it on yet. <laughs> well, the clamshell it really uh, relates yeah. to what's going on here. Exactly, because I do have a clam tub downstairs. Um, so it's like, yeah, little clamshells that I inside 
of the clamshell was this neatly folded up piece of what looked like newspaper. And on, upon opening it, I was like thinking that maybe something was going to fall out of it. I wasn't sure. It did come from some gypsies. But then I opened it up, and it has this crazy scribbling and words that I, d I don't recognize, and then censored uh, spread of various and I ethnic believe women. that they ordered something, and that was included as, you know, sometimes you get a package and it's sort of buffered by... Oh, right, they put paper. it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was packing material. Really? And they found that it within the packing material and kept it. It's right over there, if you'd like and to take now, a look. There's a, there's a shell sitting on top of it right now. If you'd like oh, to see it. Man. My mom and dad. Your mom oh. and dad are calling? They were, we were at, at Lackey. They were at they Lackey. Were they were and my daughter, daughter, everybody, my whole family. Yeah, yeah they were great, she man. She had the cans on, the earmuffs, yeah. and yeah, rocking James, around. James McLeod had his little boy there. Yeah. Rocking. It was like my three, daughter there was like James four or five son. kids there. It was, it was good. They all had the muffs yeah. on. That's kind of, you know, I want to make a point about the fact that my daughter was able to come there and have a good time, and nobody was, you know, so out of control that it was uncomfortable, right. which, you know, I was obviously cognizant of. I might have been the most out of control person there, so that's the irony. But uh, at the same time, I was very happy to see that, you know, the love was such that my daughter, my family, my whole family could just hang out and have a good time. And my old man stayed till the bitter end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah your dad was a lot of fun. He was singing along with the Gypsy Ghost when they uh, did that encore with, the, with no, no, no PA. That was, that was unreal. I, he told me about that, and I said, oh, really? And he goes, yeah, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> there was about a hundred people singing along to "Coming Home" without a PA on. Like, oh wow! It was just <laughs> turned real intimate real quick. It yeah, was it awesome. certainly did. Yeah. It was a great night. So I, I'd like to shift gears for a moment, if uh, if you guys yeah, don't mind. Course. So uh, Brandon, I, I saw you post uh, something from the page uh, with respect to some shows that you have coming up with summer camp. And yeah. There's a bit of a call out to some musicians. You're looking to fill some bills. Can you comment on that? It is. I, we've, well, summer camp and uh, the music hall and everywhere else in London. I mean, there's a, a, a ton of great shows coming up this, uh, this summer and, you know, going into the fall that are being booked right now. Uh, you know, I try to give a local slot to, uh, to just about every show. Uh, there's, like I said, there's tons coming up of all different genres. So I'm, I'm tired of using the same ones, and uh, I'd like to start giving some new bands some shots. Uh, so I want, you know... Same thing with our radio show. Let us know that you're out there, uh, but get in touch. I mean, I'll probably have a, an opportunity for you, whether it's uh, an opening slot or rounding out another strong local gig. Um, just let me know. I've, I've heard some complaints about people, you know, not being able to get into call the office and to the music hall, and they're tired of playing the Blackshire and doing the same routines. Uh, hit, I, I've, I've told you this before, but hit me up. I mean, I'm, I'm there, and I'm always willing, so. He ain't joking. He put the call out, and I messaged him, and he was right on it. Ed at summercampproductions.com and send me your band info. Totally. And likewise, I mean, same thing with our radio show. Send us your tunes. We want to know that you're there. That's right. Really As well. a result of what we've been doing, we've discovered. Uh, Man, I've discovered at least 200 bands that I didn't even know existed yeah, exactly. in and around this city, and I've been doing this for 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Even when I was putting on Lackey, I was like throwing out the, you know, the idea of the the whole concert, and yeah. I was getting some response and stuff. People wanted to play it, and then. You know, two weeks before the show, I talked to some people who were like, why didn't you get my band on there? I'm like, I, I didn't even know you were in a band. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, why do I not know that? You guys got to tell us. <laughs> you know, I, one of the, the quotes that they took from me on that article is I said that the way that you inspire um, artists is to give them opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, to emphasize your point, Brandon, I, for a long time I heard people talking about how you know, there wasn't really a lot going on and it was difficult to get shows. And, uh, you know, the, the consensus, at least from everybody that I talk to, everybody feels like there's some new life um, right now in the scene, or at least, um, you know, a bunch of bands are coming up together at the same time. Whether that's as a result of bands kind of switching, you see, you know, new members forming other things and new projects happening. There's a bunch of them that all seem to be emerging at the same time, but there just seems to be a lot of excitement uh, well, in the scene. Like a lot of, the, a lot of guys that played in bands a few years ago when the scene was booming they're all just starting to play again man, which so is many bands which is awesome the, man i mean up and coming now that are yeah like, and different yeah. genres too like it's you know it's not the same old same old well there's that too and i mean on on the other side it's it's a bunch of guys are starting to play that have been around the block so they know what they're doing and the bands that they're putting together are just 
so much better musically than their original bands were yeah. five years ago. It's, you it's know? a lot it's less like, flash and a lot more music. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I get. It's like, you know, before it was like when these guys who were really talented got together, it's like, look what I can do, look what I can do. And that's cool. I mean, I'm not shitting on it, but at the same time, what's happening now seems to be a little more condensed. Right. Yeah, what's you're, happening? They're, they're, <laughs> they're less concentrated on showing each other up. Yeah. And now they're more more into doing what's best for the music man yeah. and it's your they're coming out with some great structurally sound songs that's i mean yeah. I, yeah. I, I, song. I strongly feel that we're, we're we're just about at the point where everything's turning around the music scene in london's been always been cyclical and it usually goes in five or ten year segments uh back when i first started everyone like that the scene was awesome and it just got even more amazing and then five years ago started declining with the loss of the salt lounge and you know the embassy burned down all that yeah. stuff doing a lot of local shows and not to say that that's the reason but now i mean i'm back then everyone was everyone was a family and it was a family environment much like lackey you know yeah you yeah, got yeah. bands from from pat maloney singer yeah. songwriter stuff to mm. you know the, uh, the unreal and, and metal and folk and yeah. traditional and rock and they're and, all coming and, together and they all come together and they all whether they necessarily enjoy everyone's music they at least pay attention to it and it, are exposed to it yeah and then they all start, you know, communicating and intermingling, well, and then eventually it builds the scene and the backbone, and then things mm -hmm. get stronger, the turnouts get better, the bands that create the music, the songs get better, yeah. the performances get better, <coughs> and everything just comes to a, you know, and it's a boom. when, you know, when you're five, five to ten years younger, and you were playing a certain kind of music, that's the only music you listen to. Completely. And now, as you get older, you your ear way. starts to, you know, it starts to open up a little bit more. It's like when I was a kid, my dad told me I would love Johnny Cash, and I told him he was crazy. It'd be punk rock and nothing else. And I was home the other night, I listening to Joe Willie Nelson, Nelson cooking so dinner. Punk. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like yeah, it's completely different. It's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I never thought that I would go home and blare some Lawrence Gowan records uh, yeah. at thirty. I wouldn't be cruising around in my <laughs> Volkswagen SUV listening to Jazz Night. You yeah. know, it's like, nineteen. I wouldn't be listening to Super Tramp. You know, what I mean? but now, <laughs> my, my, can't get yeah. enough. My it's dad great. loves it now, man. It's yeah. like I'm 30 and I listen to the same music he grew but up on and he digs it. That's the thing, man. I mean, the, yeah. the more you grow, the more you're exposed to other people's music and different types of music. The more your actual interest in music and your, you know, your ears open up, the more you start to appreciate and respect It everything. becomes less about yeah. identity too, right? Because when we're all coming up, it's like you it's want to identify with something, right? Too. Whether it's music, image, people... Um, and, and, you know, for me, I was a 90s kid, right? And so that whole movement was huge because music was stagnant and the, everybody hated the 80s. And it was like, yeah. we need Bastard something new. Backstreet Boys were popular. Yeah, we're like, what yeah. What the hell is going on kids here? kids on the let's block. And they had right to be popular, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was great to see that movement. And I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I truly believe we're on, we're on the cusp of, of two <clears throat> things. Number one, you know, something special happening for our scene. But more importantly, I think there's some bands right now that are really on the cusp of putting us on the map. Um, it, it, there's just so much substantial talent here, and, and I think this is all culminating at the same time. And, it, and I think this, uh, you know, at least for what we're trying to do is going to be building to a bit of a head uh, next Saturday when we have our kickoff fundraiser show here. For those that don't know, you know, we've been doing this now for uh, coming up on a year, and within a short year, this thing has kind of ballooned into, you know, it's something special at least for me i you know i we would talk about being humble and and uh you know you had mentioned greg about you know your event and all these people embracing it and and the feeling that it gives you the, the sense of reward that you get because of all the effort that you put into it and for me that's that's really exemplified in everything that we're doing here and then case in point now we're in this new location which gives us the ability to offer a lot more to the community and, and we're going to try to operate as an alternative style venue and make it more about music and less about alcohol. You know, you can go out and you can drink anywhere, and buy drinks anywhere, but, uh, you know, we want to be able to put on some good shows and showcase some great music here. And, and uh, next weekend, uh, on the Saturday here, we're going to have our kickoff fundraiser. Everything we've been doing up until this point has been on our own time and on our own money. I mean, Ajay, um, who's been operating the cameras here for us today, uh, has been one of my biggest helpers. Um, and I shouldn't say my biggest helpers because we're kind of in this together. He and I operate Underground Sound Rehearsal Studios. Uh, but, you know, the last two days, just, uh, just as a, an example, you know, 12, 13 hours here slugging away to try to get this thing going. And we do it because we love it. Uh, yeah, but right. we want to be able to do a lot more for the community. And, and, you know, 
we put a lot of into this, but we want to be able to give a lot more. So we're hoping that people are going to come out. It's a pay what you can. Um, you know, we're hoping that people are going to make a, a generous donation, but at the same time, we're going to accept whatever people are willing to give. Uh, this is going to be a bring your own beer type of event. It's tantamount to us inviting you into our home in a private party. So that with that comes expectations that people are going to govern themselves accordingly. No you dicks. know, no dicks. Uh, we're going to look out for Seems each other. For us. You know, and, and I'm telling you right now, if anybody starts slam dancing and, and doing the, you know, the spinning whatever starting Tasmanian devil a thing and picking uh, strawberries. yeah <laughs> exactly I mean we, we've got to make sure that you know people aren't getting hurt uh, and people are respectful but at the same time uh, you know I think the lineup of talent that we have for this thing is uh, is pretty incredible I'm really excited uh, exciting. so that said I want to get to uh, a song one of the bands that are, are going to be featured on the bill and a band that I was privileged to work with uh, called the Creekside Strays this is shit out of luck here on the London Indie Underground
Places to go, everybody's telling me, but I still don't know how much more of this I can take. Cause all they're trying to say to me is a great big lie. Like all you need to heal the pain is go get high. I don't think they are.
tune in to CHRW every Friday from 3.30 to 6 p.m. While your hosts Jimmy James and Brandon Eady spend all the best indie bands from London. Listen in for show announcements, ticket giveaways, and band interviews. London Indie Underground on CHRW. Creekside Strays, Freddie and me here on the London Indie Underground. Book ended in between Texas King with Paper Tiger, Texas King, one of the other bands that's going to be performing at our live kickoff fundraiser next Saturday. And uh, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, we, we talk an awful lot here about uh, music industry arts and about the crop of talent that comes up as a result of that program. And Edie, I know you've made some colorful car- comments and remarks about that. Yeah, but uh, this uh, this graduation or this graduating class has you know changed my mind about it, uh, evidently. <coughs> Not even just in terms of talent, but in terms of like attitudes and, and professionalism. And yeah. I mean, everyone that I met there this year so far is amazing. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> well done. Trying to help out, you know. Yeah, well, we've got uh, a couple of bands that we've been featured. Uh, we featured here rather. Uh, Texas King, obviously, being one of them. O Geronimo, yeah. and then the Baxters, o, o which coincidentally we're in shirt right now. Yeah. And then uh, the Baxters, who are actually going to be performing with my band, Two Crown King, on uh, the Friday, next yeah. Friday. Call the office. 12th, they call the office, which is the night before uh, our kickoff party here. So I'm going to be a busy uh, man uh, for a couple of days. 
a little bit. Oh, I, yeah, I will definitely be very focused that weekend. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff yeah, to I do. Yeah, I guess I'm going to be doing some sound that night. It'll be, it's gonna You'll be, be helping time. us out. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's. Uh, I got to warn you right now, uh, you know, if, if you think Two Crown King is a mixing monster, wait until you meet uh, My Son the Hurricane. <laughs> they f have a full horn section. If they bring it all the time. I think they are. Yeah, I think they're okay. bringing Because I've done a few shows with them where they brought full horns, and then they've also brought a stripped-down version where it's just uh, three of them. I show up with some gear when I sh when I do those shows because I know I'm 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 limited. I know, uh, yeah. Cool, man. I well, you're welcome to use anything I got here. <laughs> Help yourself. So we're a couple of minutes away here from a live performance from the Unreal that's just uh, in, on the stage getting set up right now. The first live performance in our new facility. I'm quite excited about this. Uh, we spent a little time doing the sound check. I gotta I gotta be honest with you. It was uh, down to the wire. Um, and we uh, it came up just a couple minutes late, actually. If you were tuned in right from the top of the podcast, you'll know we start off with a three-song rock shocker, uh, which normally we get right into it uh, right off of the hop here. But uh, still had a couple of little things to take care of, but I think we got her all done. Well, you spent all day in the spider webs. It's true, man. Sorry I'm not home right now. Yeah, I had <laughs> a lot of cables to sift through, but we got it done. It's just, you know, you, you look at our setup here, and it doesn't look like there would be that much back there, but between this and, and everything that's on the stage, uh, it's uh, it's pretty substantial, and I noticed that uh, Ajay added a light for us. I know I was I, I I inquired if he could bring me two ferns, and we could have London Indie Underground ED between two ferns. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Be oh, he's, you're as equal as That's giant a dickhead as yeah. uh, <laughs> whatever the fuck is. That's Edie's <laughs> rider for next week. Yeah, two two ferns, motherfucker. <laughs> Joel can say that I lived with him. Oh, well, there you go. That's true. They're they're ready. And your little dog too. Oh, I guess I better get out there as the. Uh, oh, you're, sixth, you're joining them. The sixth unreal tonight. Yeah. Nice. How many unreals do we have in here? Well, we got we have uh, a, a loner tonight. That uh, being Mac Grady, who's going to be slapping some bass, slapping a bass, slapping the bass, man. And then uh, Joel's going to be sitting in for some of the vocals that would normally be filled in on that position. Oh man, I'm just so glad to be at finally reach this day and be actually be broadcasting and everything be working. I think so. Can you go check? I haven't touched anything, so it should be good to go. It's been a it's been a nice two week break, but it's uh, you know it's great to be back. Yeah, well, we wanted to get going last week, um, but we, there was just too much to do. Too much. Too much. But we got a lamp now. I hear some noise happening back there. You might hear it too. Are we uh, we good to go, Arch? Yeah. All right. Well, folks, if you want to bear with me here for a second while I do a little clickety click and make sure that we're good to go here. Thanks for tuning in today for, uh, like I said, our kickoff London Indie Underground at our new facility. Thank By the way, you are always welcome to come down here and join us anytime. We do have an open door policy. As a matter of fact, we're, uh, we're hoping that people are going to come in and uh, you know embrace this as a, a networking music social evening where we're hoping to showcase and, and continue to showcase some of the area's best talents. Uh, but moreover, I think uh, you know music is a community, and I think it's important to get to know everybody and to, uh, as Edie was commenting on early, uh, you know, we're all in this together, and I think uh, you know we've got a great forum here to allow that to happen. So please, uh, don't be shy. Come on down. Feel free to introduce yourself. We're all pretty humble around here. Uh, you know, we're uh, we're here for you, and we're here to support you, whether it's the musician or uh, the music enthusiast. So, ladies and gentlemen, without uh, further ado, I'd like to present to you a little band called the Unreal.
we doing, fellas? Yeah? It's here for Grady, who's filling in on bass. Yeah, we got a little fill-in tonight. Our good friend, Matt Grady, from Emac Studios and Tandem Fucking Eagle. Next one's called Gospel.
Why is this one called Kabbalah? Raphael, do I get to? Listen, my love for you is like a river. Like a summer breeze that makes my soul shiver. <laughs> One look from you is more precious than gold. Let's go get some barbecue and get busy. <laughs>
Benefit of a doubt with uh, Runaway here on the London Indie Underground. Before that, what do we hear? A new beginning with your My Cavalry. Another one of the bands that's going to be performing at our kickoff fundraiser here next Saturday. Hope you enjoyed the Unreal. We're waiting for them to join us here in studio as they wind down from what I thought was a pretty kick-ass performance. Badass. Well, we do have their, you know, the luxurious si- guest backup vocalist who was singing the prettiest the sixth unreal <laughs> oh nevada's in here too now i got a, i got a i got a sweet question so now that the penny's been abolished like if you find one does that make it like 10 times more lucky like are you like a luckier person to <laughs> if, find a penny if it there? was if it was made before 1992 because then it is all copper and then it's worth four cents really really no 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 S H I T, hey. So what? What's? I think I found the loophole you, where you can get two extra cents worth of gas every time. I do, yes, I do. It I all found the time it too. too. I yeah. found it too. Ten dollars and two cents. You pay with cash. Yep. That's it. As long as you're not paying debit, anything, yep. anything below the five cent range. I've got a sweet way you of. You can go twenty oh two. You know what? I mean, in short term, it's two cents, but long term. You're looking right at up. a college fund right there. I've also <laughs> found a way of uh, of uh, really ripping off Tim Hortons uh, when the roll up the rim comes around. Uh oh. You, you have to have the winning tab. You run through the fucking, or the effing drive-thru. <laughs> and, uh, and you say, yeah, I've got a winning tab. And then you order the, the coffee or whatever it is that you've won. 
Then you add on like a bagel with cream cheese. I need extra cream cheese on there. I'll take a, a blueberry fritter, etc. Pull up to the drive-thru and quote unquote, I'm doing the quotation marks for the they listeners out there. They can see it. And, oh, uh, hi. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah. And then you just forget about the, the tab. And if they don't ask you for it, you cruise the away. They hand it to you. They don't even think about it. If the order is over five bucks, you're good to go. Nice. A couple ways to rip off uh, the world. <laughs> oh, man. We could t- uh, well, the opinions well, expressed by... I used to tour these guys, <laughs> and uh, we discovered that buying BLTs were too expensive at Tim Hortons. But if you got a bagel, added bacon, lettuce, tomato, and cheese, it was a $2.20 cheaper. It was like a dollar ninety-eight. That's a fact. For, for a BLT. Also, the Whopper scam. Uh, yeah, the Whopper scam is really all? good. Uh, if you yeah, if you type in a, a, a different code on the back and then you hand in your receipt, you do it. Or if you uh, if you, you want the bitch seat here. Oh, oh, we we got the boys coming in. You're coming in here. Where are you coming in? Here, how about you, how about you coming over here? Why don't I'm you just here. try it? Hey, sit over here with you. No, here, here. This is good. Come here. Come here. I'll come or the, here. Uh, I'll come over your walls. I'll come the, over uh, the floor. I'll come over your bathroom. I'll come wherever the hell I want. The uh, the on tour the on tour scam of actually grabbing uh, like a Taco Bell cup because you can walk into any right. Taco Bell with no a cup and uh, get free refills. So you can get free refills as long as you have the corresponding cup to the restaurant that you're at. Carry it with you at all times. Have ten different cups on you, and do you, you get have free I didn't. a collection of cups in your car. We, uh, when we were on tour, yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that think, you introduced well, me to this whole world of pissed, ordering but. wings, where I had no idea you could call a place and say, "Listen, my order of wings. I want nothing but flats. I want nothing but flats, yeah. and they got to be double cooked. Yeah, Pizza tonight too. That's Bob. the biggest dick move of all time. It is. Because when I get I my wings, veins I always removed. get the drumstick. I get. I get what I want. All the veins removed. Well, yeah, <laughs> looks like you're not eating. The trick worms. to the cup is to actually wait until they have the special edition plastic cups, and then use that cup. There you go. You and can do it. You can do whatever the f you want. What is the special edition? Come with don't. like a lifetime. Oh, well, it's like back guarantee. in the day when they had like the Godzilla cups. Probably Whatever had, a big movie had comes out. I thought it was a good idea to get a giant Culligan water tub oh, and man. fill it with cat kitty cat litter. litter. That one was probably the best piss jug of all time. <laughs> what? Okay, so <laughs> we got tired of we 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 uh, would always we always piss jug. So we who didn't? Hey, wait, can we show have a show of hands who didn't ever use piss cups or piss jugs? Oh, in the uh, zero hands. Wild tour? No, zero, just didn't know in your bedroom if you. Oh, not my. <laughs> don't want to make it to the wash. But we we had a stash of at least like twenty, and Alex would get so pissed when we use his. Two liter Gatorade bottle no one. Intended. Yeah. yeah, but it had the wide hole on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> the well, Gatorade, then, Gatorade bottles are amazing for pissing in the back of a We then too. got this idea to take one when of those giant Culligan water bottle. tubs, yeah. cut it open, you don't want it f- fill it with cat litter, <laughs> thinking that, you know, we piss and it'll clump. You piss and it, it should clump, right? But if you've got five guys pissing in a Culligan water thing filled halfway with cat litter, what happens is the. Uh, the piss saturates about the first three there, inches right? of the uh, of the cat litter, and then Turns it solidifies, mud. and then uh, the rest of it's just piss. It's so about two liters of piss on top of that sitting in a Culligan jug. Real nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We, we made it from, I, I think we made it from probably BC to that? Winnipeg <laughs> once or twice with uh, some decent so, oh, anyways. All right, well, I'm joined now by the, uh, oh, the yeah, members the and the honorary Unreal. members. For the, for the evening of the band The Unreal, which you just saw perform. Awesome job, gentlemen. Sounded great. Thank you very Thanks. much. Uh, we had it cranked up here in the booth. It was awesome. Sweet. Thank you for, uh, first off, thank you for coming today and, and performing on the podcast. Well, we haven't yet. Say something nice. Oh. Is that your thing? You just try to derail people when they're talking? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're trying to conduct a broadcast right, here go. with people listening. Right, it's okay, go. though. I get right, it. Go. I get it. Trash this whole broadcast. <laughs> just toss it out. This is... I just but feel I'm like saying, Slater and pump up the volume. I appreciate you coming are. down here and performing with us today. I know there we was really a bit of a bit of a schmozzle there earlier with uh, you know not able to get a member to join us today because of work commitments. But that said, can um, we talk about Matt Grady here? We can talk about Matt Grady. Hello, Matt Grady. Hey, everybody. Can you, uh, Josh? Can you do me a favor? Can you tip that thing right over to? There you go. Perfect. I'll catch all three. Uh, go. Cool. Matt Grady. <laughs> so, Matt, you got the call today to come in and fill in. Yeah, I did. So, did Joel. It was up in the air. Yeah. Too, Don't worry about Joel. Me. <laughs> Talk about Grady. Well, Grady, we thought would be far less qualified because he just finished recording uh, four songs of ours. That's ones right. That, the ones that we just Bach. performed. 
That's right. No. So you know these songs okay. intimately. So he, he's been listening. As to any them producer knows, so when you listen or you're mixing, and you're listening back to the same track again and again and again and again, you so get it down after a while. Never played it, but no, it's gonna it was nice because I could split with Zach two and two. So it was right, nice. right, very good. Cool, man. It was but, a fun little set. I was kind of like on my way to being shit canned when they phoned me, so you not guys surprised. screwed that up for me. You just, just, you just slam on the no, brakes I, and pop her in reverse. No, no, I know everything was worked out. I, I kept it, the, because I kept now the game. all they did was say, "Take Stay ten minutes out of your day to learn the songs." And ten then, minutes? Is that is that what you think? That's how long it took you? Eh? Pretty sure. That Two took songs. you an hour, dude. No. Still, I wasn't. I wasn't <laughs> Still, like ten minutes. Ten, nine minutes. Boys. Bottom line is yeah. we didn't want to be we didn't want to be a bunch of assholes and cancel on you last minute because that's not professional, man. That's so not like us. You know, well, show I must go on. You coming that's down. Right. Awesome set. So uh, listen, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, obviously, you guys are kind of formed to the ashes of a couple of different groups. So can you tell us about the the background of of those groups and and how you guys came together? White snake. <laughs> White snake. <laughs> Wham. Uh, yeah, well. Go Nobody. Ahead. Yeah. So Josh go and I. And go Dan. ahead, the Skag Barons. Yeah. Speaking of. Skags like, broke up. Josh and Dan and I had started jamming, partying quite a bit. And then eventually. Uh, <laughs> hey, let's know. be honest, right? Yeah. So. So, so Skag Barons. So a couple of you guys were, yeah. were in the Skag Barons yeah, we before. Were How long did were the Skag Barons around for? Because I, I remember you, your, your name yeah, was kind of was, in the scene there for go. a long time. We had. We had a couple so little. That was the first time I was in that space over there. Was for their CD release yeah. party. Yeah, exactly. On first a scale of one, uh, on a scale of one to seventy-two, how a much? A trillion. Awesome that was it. over the top. Like, it was weird because I lived in a house like right down the road with Hatchet and never knew about this place. And then I was fortunate enough to get to master that EP that they put out. And then they invited me down here. And it was like... Wait, you mastered our record? Yeah, I mastered that EP that you guys did. The one that sounded like shit? Yeah, that one. (laughs) (laughs) And Albini did? Yeah, tell him that. No, we... uh, Yeah, so anyways, we started jamming, and then uh, uh, Scott Swain came on board playing bass. And uh, then Zach came out. We needed a singer. We tried for, what, how many months? We tried out, yeah, we tried out a whole bunch of people. And nice well, I came out for a bit, and yeah. then, I, yeah. then I bitched yeah. out. Because, Friday night, uh, party fest, so it was always fun. Bitch, I guess. Then Zach came on and oh, took the reins, and been rolling ever since then. So, nice. Yeah, rolling in the deep. So how, how long now, uh, officially, have you uh, have you been a band? Four shows. Two days. Four shows. <laughs> Two days. The question so, is, yeah. how long before it all fucking hits the fan? Is that really what the question uh, is? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. It's an ongoing battle. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do want to say, though, we're, we're, we're breaking up here. right now. So I do want to say, though, down. like, I know these guys are kidding around, but when every member of the band was in the studio and there was nothing but camaraderie and total... Boners. Boners for each other. And Wait. everybody was helping each other out, you know? It was like... <laughs> People were people were helping each other out, and kind of the only time that something came up where it was like no was if you can try this. And I would say ninety nine percent of the time, whoever was on the spot went, "Yeah, you're right," and it contributed to the fun. Well, you product. did make it really easy for us to work, you know. Professionally, we all get along <laughs> great, and then we all kind of it's the same with any band man you, yeah. hey, you be quiet the back with, there peanut gallery you're stuck in the room with the same bunch of guys and egos start flying and just everybody you know it happens in every band yeah. Yeah. that's right when when it comes down to the wire we're all we're hey all man i, I truly don't think you can appreciate what it's like to have a relationship with three or four or five other dudes unless you're in a band with them look at the uh, ramones yeah well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look at Guns and Roses. Yeah. But that's not that's not something you can explain to somebody. You know what I mean? Like even trying to explain that, you know, to a girlfriend or a significant I'll other or, or somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, All I have to say to your significant other is that it's exactly like our relationship. We do have a lot of fun, though. Yeah, but I with mean, five or four or whatever it may be. How many? Exactly hey, how many bananas saying, do you guys throw in the mix? <laughs> That's why I'm single. <laughs> Despite all, you throwing it out there. You gonna put on your online profile on this <laughs> podcast? No, no, it's it's it's, it's no. How, hey, how do we cope with single life? Does that mean we're gay? <laughs> you know what? No, 
If, if, I was no, to, if I was to marry my best boy. friend right now, I should be, uh, Not should in be the proposing sense. to Josh Torrance right now. <laughs> We're already technically common law, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, is that why you guys smell like text me bananas, and Vaseline, and condoms all the time? Dishwasher. Oh, yeah. it's true. That's a relationship. I, wa- I, I came home it's from official. work today, and this guy's got a bowl of shreddies with an onion in it. You guys are flying. Josh Torrance, hey, can I go on the record and say Josh Torrance loves onions? Oh, yeah. He is an onion. Frank Reynolds is Charlie Kelly. His, fa- his favorite <laughs> meal is onions sauteed in onions with a side of onions. No, it's just an onion with salt. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Like eat them like that. The big Spanish onions. Go on more bare it's bones than that. He never, no, but the thing just is, he, he never gets like the halitosis. What do you do with that over there? You got no one for your back. Baptized has been off one. tour for two years. and Baptized in halitosis. He eats like he's been on tour for the last... And you come home and Josh is crying and Burger you're like, dude, Whopper what's wrong? Receipts. And he's like, it's dinner time, bro. Just eat an onion, like an apple. Watching well, the story. Peanut butter and onion sandwiches. And, uh... When I propose to Josh, anyway. it's going to be with an onion, right? Dude, I've... <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I'm not crying. Question, it's not awesome. because it's so emotional. Why do you get to propose to me? I don't know. We're already... We've been living together for like 10 yeah, years. Yeah, but you're saying... We're already dude. Because well, Bert's too... Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Because Bert's too moody and McBain's, <laughs> McBain's not into dudes that play in bands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going we're gonna to get to some music here. We'll come back with some more conversation. I, I would like to get to know a little bit more about the band and uh, sure. kind of what your plans are going forward. I know you're in the midst of recording with, your, uh, with Grady Eddie Max Studio. Uh, and I'm dying to get my hands on that stuff. We did, uh, we did get the demos, and we've certainly been playing them not only here but, uh, but at the radio show. But Thank you. Cool. Sooner, yeah. sooner you get them Can to me, the better. Oh, shit. Sorry, go ahead. What? I just no uh, that man that man back there. And I don't even know what's right going here. on right now. They're talking about the demos that he that he has been playing. Okay, I'm just, just bringing you up to speed. I have some okay. demos. I've been playing the demos. What are you gonna play right now? Right now, I'm gonna play a band called the Mercy Now. Mercy yeah. Now. Mercy. Who are some friends of mine from Toronto? They're going to be joining us uh, at some point here in London. We got to get them down here as well as I think we're gonna do a bit of a show of exchange with one of the two bands that I'm playing with in Toronto. But uh, the, the drummer from this band. Uh, was my best man when I was married years ago <coughs> and uh, really uh, truly a great friend of mine so I like to support them and I think they fucking kick ass so. and they work with Ian Blurton and they work with Ian Blurton oh Ian Blurton's new See? band amazing now I yeah. talk to his, no not his new band the, the drummer what? the drummer oh, yes, from this band his name is Lee Rogers he has a studio in Toronto called Pro Gold which Ian Blurton sublets from him cool um, there's also so a titty Ian's bar in Toronto called Pure Gold Solid. Okay, well, maybe I was thinking Burlington. On that note, <laughs> fade to black. Mercy now. Trust right. us on the one in the underground. <laughs>
found work today It's gonna pay the bill Can't wait to tell my friends and my family They're gonna turn on their heads Know when I'm not a jerk That I might have skill Perspective implores my want to exploit In exchange for my ration of bread I'm gonna save what's left of my soup Gonna dig myself out once and for all Settle my scores with the rich and the greedy The banks, the schools, and the feds Gonna get away One of these days And it'll be good in the woods, I tell ya Get me out, let me out Get me out, let me out for good When I graduate childhood Sure I'll be 40 by the time I can afford it but I swear I'm gonna set it up right We're gonna have the time to own our lives Wake up each day and know we're not wasting it racing to beg for what's ours We're gonna simplify Hold no prisoners take no lives and once we strip off we can't tell lies and we'll know it's all us and now Gonna get away one of these days And it'll be good in the woods, I tell ya Get me out, let me out Get me out, let me out Get me out, let me out for good Day for such a fucking lousy way, but I want things. We need to see stuff and hear stuff and learn stuff, and it costs so much, and we're sick of trying to give it up. We're gonna simplify one of these days, and it'll be good in the words I tell you. Get me out, let me out, get me out, let me out. Give me out, let me out, hear me out, see me out for good. Guys, back on track. Pat Maloney with Good in the Woods here on the London Indie Underground. Pat just performed part of Cam Lackey this past weekend here at Greg Hatchett's event. And uh, we were just talking offline that he absolutely killed it. I thought he was great. Uh, he's w certainly become one of my favorite performers from this area right now. And it's just him with the guitar. But the guy's got charisma for days. And, uh, yeah, it was such a great performance. I can't wait to have him back here. I was talking to him uh, earlier today. Uh, we're probably going to do a victory lap here and have Pat Maloney come back on. Uh, for another performance. He's got a bunch more material that he's working on, some big plans. I think he's going to be heading off to Europe, actually, to, uh, to do nice. some shows. And uh, was talking to me about a couple of prospective uh, producers that he may be working with here in, in the, uh, the coming months, which uh, is amazing. So looking forward to having him back on. Great performer. And then before that, the Mercy Now would trust us. Uh, they performed on our podcast, I guess this is going back probably about six weeks ago, and incidentally, if you'd like to check out our previous archive of podcasts, you can do that. Go to LondonIndieUnderground.com and click on podcasts. There's a, a link there for the archive. It'll take you to our YouTube channel where I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the 37 or 38 podcasts, including, and I, I hope that it went up today, uh, I uploaded our Two Crown King podcast that we performed uh, as sponsored by Molson Coors, where we performed our album, uh, 1604, uh, beginning to end, hosted by Ryan Valderon. It was a great party. Go and check it out. We'll post up the links for it, uh, as well as any of the new stuff. Give us a follow, if you're not already, at, uh, you know, on Facebook and obviously on Twitter, London underscore Indie underscore UG. So anyways, back to the Unreal. You guys filed in nicely. It's great timing, by the yes, way. Yes, sir. I'm impressed. I had to bang on another Thanks, track, but uh, you guys came in right perfect. at the right time. So I was saying before the break that we wanted to get into a, a little bit more detail about the band. So you're only four shows deep now, correct? Yeah. Now, having said that, you, you played... Uh, in the short time that you played, you've had a couple of really cool shows. Yeah, yeah. We we, uh, we played Bovine. with played at the Bovine, Bovine with was uh, a fun show. with uh, 
Burn it's red. Burn red. So a few guys from uh, Monarchs. Yeah. A few Couple guys from. from uh, was that the Monarchs the band with the uh, chick singer? Yes. Yeah, she yeah. was old. She was awesome. Comprised of a few different bands. Some of the guys played in the Full Blast, which is awesome because like you know. Play with Close, we totally yeah, the did Bison a, Bros. Did a, shit, did a show bison. called The Office with the Bison Boys, yep. which was fun as shit. Yep. Always a good party with uh, those guys, too. Played Locky, and which was, who was the other fun one? as hell. We just played with Burn Murder and Call The Office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Ian Blurton, it's getting back show. to Ian yeah. Blurton. Like that, that guy's new band. Ooh, that guy's rest. new band is so good. Yeah. yeah. Just an all-around talent. Ian Blurton. Band. He's a yeah. legend. He's really a legend. Touches he's awesome. like, I, I've dubbed him the, the Canadian Rick, <clears throat> indie Rick Rubin. Yeah, he's... Yeah. We, or we, the, the Canadian King Midas. Everything he touches turns to fucking gold. Yeah, Me and Nevada true. have talked to that guy over the years about <laughs> kind of working with us. And great. he's still down. He wants to do some work with us. And oh, I got a great love, connection for you to, to do that, too, man. Yeah? Yeah, well, he, like I said, he sublets my buddy's recording studio. Sweet. And he produces yeah. all his stuff. So and, and I didn't even know that... With Come On, he did a whole bunch of work at uh, Jay from Wade Zombie Studio. Yeah, you're saying. Was he pretty Illuminati? So. No. Uh, you're thinking of uh, Nick, Nick, who's in yeah. uh, Biblical, which rips too. But yeah. Ian Blurton would be pretty awesome to work with. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. So what's the plans here? So you got the, the new EP well, that we're, we're, we're not far away from. Yeah. We're, we're that, still right? we're in phase one. Uh, we just did four songs with Grady over to Emac. Yeah. They, like... This guy is... He killed it. Like, I'm not saying it to suck his dick just because he's sitting here next to me. This well, guy knows, he knows what's up. So, he knows so, how to hit a red Suck button. his dick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think the plan is to do those four songs and hopefully in the next coming months do another four. I okay. think, I think we're locked in with Grady. Grady's our boy. And hopefully, fun. you know, in the fall, be able to put something out on vinyl and then go from there, man. You know, start playing a little bit more. I obviously I gotta take you know a couple of weeks off because I got a baby on the way and stuff certainly, like that. Certainly, certainly. Gotta adjust, but then well, you know, said a couple, couple weeks days. and not a couple months. <laughs> well, she's listening. I'm sure she'll be at home. What's so. <laughs> up, <laughs> <Not> Robin? <laughs> you angel. Oh, before we go any further, I just want to say happy birthday to my good friend Dave Eakins. Oh, Woo, he's uh, oh Dave Ripper. You know, Dave? he's yeah happy Dave Eakins' birthday, birthday tonight. It's who, sorry? Uh, Whose birthday? Cap. 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 Happy birthday, Cap. Happy birthday, Cap. Happy birthday, Cap. Yeah. He might be watching this. You know. He can probably run a tax bike right he's now. He's some out shit. Out well, no, <laughs> he's, a, he's, out, he's out with Aaron Cal. They're having a couple of drinks. Yeah. They're texting me right now. The, you know, we'll see yeah, where it goes. Do you have a place to go right now? Yeah. No, not at all. No, I'm, I'm cozy. I like this couch. And that AC that's blowing at us right now. That's great in here, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Nice yeah. work, by the way. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah the this, air anybody, anyone that hasn't seen this place, <laughs> anyone that hasn't seen this place, you got to come down on set next Saturday. <laughs> and just, I hate coming down. I want to give Come up. up on the 13th. <laughs> yeah. I wanna come on over. I want to give it up for uh, Come wherever you want chair on the 13th. Hey, that was mighty gracious Torrance. to him. That was Torrance, the first time he's had that chair in a while, I think. I'm going to come wherever I want. By, yeah. <laughs> on July 13th, I'm going <laughs> to come. Hey, can we, hey, on hey, July 13th, sorry, Torrance. Would you like to, sorry, the mic is yours. Where are you gonna oh, I was come just going to say the about the, uh, the 13th. Where am yeah. I going to come? Yeah. Well, I'm going to come wherever I want, first off. Because he's an adult. <laughs> on the 13th, on the morning of the 13th. Then on the night of the 13th, I'm going to come oh. down to uh, <laughs> You're gonna bass London in the Underground for the fundraiser show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we playing that? We are. Oh. You're so that's, hey, that's our next show. That's your next show. That's I was going to segue yeah. into that, but then you were kind of doing your thing. And oh, thanks. I was just watching. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I was letting it happen. It's, it's all good. Show. It's all good. So, yes, the 13th, you'll be joining us, which you guys are going to be our headline act. Oh, uh, oh. And sweet. It, and Thank you. you know, I, hopefully that's not an intimidating thing by any means. And I, I wanted to, uh, you know, you guys are unquestionably one of the loudest bands I've ever heard. Oh, that's, and we're the hardest partying band in London, no doubt. <laughs> I have to give you that too. So I, I will to say this: between them and Tramahawk in three weeks at Emac, the cans total was 105, and the two four empty was. Eight two fours, and then there was a bunch of liquor bottles and stuff. Well, let's talk. Can you say that in let's, English? Let's let's talk about the decibel meter. Yeah. For yeah. Torrance's. Oh yeah, we did a uh, we did a little reading. I wish we had done it with Tromahawk too, but we did a decibel reading with these guys when we set up their uh, their guitar rig, and uh, which was comprised of how many rigs? Uh, six heads and six cabs. 
And a couple of combos. And a couple of combos thrown in there. And one tornado. And one tornado. <laughs> one and a whole shell. bunch of Mexican food. <laughs> a lot of Mexican food. A lot of 25 stuff. 25 junior bacon it. cheeseburgers. 25 junior bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> one raw um, one. I feel like you guys are white guys talking about the last time you got high. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time, man? <laughs> Anyhow, the long story short is that the reading in the room was uh, above the threshold of pain. So I was there. It was above 120. It clipped the meter out at 115 or something like that. So listen up, kids. Over. Try and out top that. Yeah, go ahead. Out do that. Out yeah. top. We top dare you. We dare you. <laughs> Pain yourselves. <laughs> Pain yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> We'd send people Pain out. Yourselves, motherfuckers. We'd send people out into the guitar room when strap on they some lambskins right, and get so into that. That was a punishment. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Too far. Yeah, I went when I first got there. They said go in and check out the rig. I went in, Torrance was just finishing tuning up, and I said, hit an open E chord, and he hit it, and I immediately felt sick to my stomach, <laughs> because it was pissed. so loud, I almost the brown note. I almost brown pissed, note. puked, and pooped at the exact same that's moment. That's called a number three, dude. No, that's the cleanser, bro. <laughs> that is the fucking cleanser. Yeah. Dude, felt that's... like I was drinking water and eating cayenne pepper for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was well done. Hot licks. So... Uh, I don't. I know you're in phase. You're in phase one. So uh, as soon as you get this stuff, obviously you got to get it to well, us. So hey, I, I would say. F- we I would say phase one is complete. Yeah. Oh. We we tracked in two days, everything, and I think we all signed off at the end that I have everything I need to mix, and the next phase of things is going to get it up on deck. Subtraction. I'd also Subtraction. Say, <laughs> just waiting for you, yeah. bud. Yeah. Everybody's waiting on me. I'd also say Grady's yeah, breaking my go, fucking right. heart right now. I gotta say, as a, as a vocalist. Uh, Coming in, I like I, I just sort of came in at the last second to check things out on the Sunday night, and uh, as a vocalist to another vocalist who's sitting across from me, Zach absolutely killed it. Like, no, it was no. crazy. He man. did. He, he did. He walked in there and it was like, okay, let, let let's try a take, and then he blasted through the first song, and it was like, okay, that was perfect. Let's go on to the <laughs> second track, and it was uh, it was nonstop like. Uh, like I said, as a vocalist to another vocalist, it was incredible watching these guys do what they do. Amazing. And, uh, well, I've said it. I've said it before. Like, first off, me singing in this band is completely different for me. For me, I've always played instruments. So being up there with nothing in my hands, coming out to the first couple practices, Joel was there. I had a microphone, and he would say, "The parts are great, but I don't know if he's fucking, you know, frontman material." So then I bought a mic stand. That so stand. that's my mic stand. that's my instrument, and I, I've I've said it to him, and I've said it to everybody else. Like I I love when Joel comes out because there's nobody I respect more in the city, yeah. or even as a musician. No, it was just actually like, a wonderful this guy, thing to have oh. Joel come out at the time he did because it, it's it's was easy. Tired at that point. Not only that, but it's it's easy. It's easy for me to tell the guys to fuck off when they try to tell me to take another take Which or like try something. Time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Same <laughs> as you do when we say try that again, Danny. But <laughs> it's like. Uh, you know, to have him there and me say, had that, I'd always go to him, had that sound, and he'd give me the thumbs up. And I mean, yeah. thanks yeah, for coming. It was like, awesome. he, he absolutely crushed it. The, you know, to come in at that point was, was great for me. Well, to sit through two days of fucking working with us, and when you had to struggle through all that to like at the end of the two days for you to come in yeah, but you and to lay down one. solid vocals. It was, I don't it, know, was, it was awesome. It was awesome to watch. It was awesome to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Honestly, like, it means the world to me. Work yeah. with Matt Grady. Awesome. He's incredible. Thank you, people. So that was actually Mike, true. We had the conversation right before he went out to do the vocals. And Nevada and I were talking about, you know, we got great beds. We're sitting on really cool stuff. But without a great vocal, you're not going to crack the masses. You know, you'll crack the people who love instrumental stuff. But without that ambassador between the music and the people. And it was great to have a guy like Joel sitting there at a point when, you know, we're blitzing and he comes in with fresh ears and he's catching things that are subtle, but at the end of the day, they add up. Yeah, there there was next to nothing that I had. But the catches he had were monumental. They were like big catches that I know for sure people would have been like, ah, shit. If we had just caught that, minor, minor, minor things, things in, but in the whole, in the whole scheme. Well, Sad, I mean, especially as you as a producer being there, and like your ears were shot by the end of it, I'm sure, and have him come in and just pick the smallest thing, like my pronunciation, like yep. leading off with Zeds. Zeds. Or, or, or Zai, uh, Zai feel this way rather than because, you know, K. 
because I feel this way, just being Zai. He's hey, telling me I'm saying Zai. Hey, what was it like? You know? What was it like when Torrance recorded? Because I slept through that whole thing downstairs. <laughs> that passed out to German. Hey, I passed out to that German lizard. porn. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, the well, magma. Been there forever, yeah. But <laughs> funny enough, you would bring that up because I mean, typically you do your rhythm guitars, and traditionally, I yeah, mean, yeah. you guys do uh, like kind of trade off. You trade off rhythm and lead. But yeah. you know, for all intents and purposes, you're kind of backbone guitar, and Torrance is sort of fucking shredder. Did you hear that, Torrance? On the backbone. Well, shred and backbone. Is there such thing as the front <laughs> wait, bone? Wait, Forrest Gump's backbone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get it. Yeah, I get it, boys. Yeah, I get it. However, the process was a little bit sort of backwards, and we got. We found that the sonics of it, like from a more of a technical point of view, uh, worked better than we could have hoped for. Swain like, killed it too. Yeah, yeah. He was everybody just, was on point. Was like, That's kind there, of was a, there was a few. He was you rocking cannot, it so. Well, he rocked the fuck. He was rocking it so hard yeah. in the in the control room. <laughs> yeah. That he almost fell into the tape reels a few times. <laughs> no, and what do you mean in the control room? I don't know. All if, over if, the studio. For those everything. for those of you listening and watching that don't know Scott Swain, the guy's six three and like two hundred and fifty pounds, and he's it just a fucking bull in a china shop. He's a big head, and in the grand scheme of things, Scott Swain's head is about. Two and a half times. It's, it, it's got its own weather system. That's how you gauge. That's, that's true. That's true. But it's absolutely true that and I think what Is that how he gets well, all the girlies all the girls he's got his all own the gravitational girlies. pull. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Swain. I think the underlying asshole. thing here is that everybody was on point. Everybody that's amazing. Right. Well I can't wait to hear it. To we love you, Scotty. We need to uh, we need to get that from you as soon as possible. So your next show, obviously next Saturday, I have no here at London Indie Underground, five thirty two Adelaide. Uh, this wait. whole thing next Saturday, not yes. this Saturday, next Saturday. Nice. Uh, the whole event uh, doors open at eight o'clock. First band kicks off at eight thirty. Uh, I'm going to be playing with my Motown soul band, Marcellus Wallace. It's going to be our second Which show. Is Does he awesome. yes. Does yes. he look like a bitch? Yeah. That shit was good. I like it. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. We had a lot of fun. Amazing. So we got you guys are my dad's favorite band of oh, the nice. entire day. Well, your dad is like 60, right? Yeah. But hey, so wait, regardless. isn't your dad dead? <laughs> he's, coming. he's coming. He's coming down awesome. for your, uh, he's going to see you guys. Yeah. Too, yeah. He's, coming awesome. he's coming to the 13th. Well, hey, yeah. wherever wherever all over the place. Wherever, wherever he, he wants, because he's an adult. Yeah, great guy. It was awesome <laughs> hey, to talk to him. Such a dude. I'm an adult now. Mo Berg. So listen, gentlemen, I, I want to thank you once again for, for coming down and performing. Um, on our Thanks podcast for today and yeah, for the interview. Uh, we've reached the end. I do need to take a couple of minutes to thank the sponsors. Uh, you guys are welcome to stick around for that, but I uh, would have to ask you to, to respect the sponsors because i got to do my thing. But that said, uh, you're more than welcome to, uh, to you. do your thing. Thanks for having us, brother. Yeah, cool, man. Thanks. I really Thanks. appreciate Thanks. that. It means, means a lot to us, man. Um, all right, Ajay, we're going to do this? Cool. All right, so first got to thank Jason Rorda, Ajay Rorda Photography, uh, London's premier photog. In my opinion, he's done a lot of work with me. He's got a great promo that he's running right now for only 25 bucks, uh, and he's going to do some promo shots. Um, if you've not seen Jay's work before, he's done a lot of live stuff, a lot of band stuff. He's been working on a lot of model stuff recently. And one of the things that I've always appreciated about Jason is his uh, Photoshop skills. And not that uh, he takes bad photos and he has to make them look good, but the treatments that he does to them, and, and some of, he does some weird stuff. Like if you go to his, uh, his Facebook page, uh, he's got one photo album that's dedicated to just some of the, the work that he's done in Photoshop. And I forget what the album is called, it escapes me at the moment, but it's something like Obscured Photos, uh, where you can see some of the work that he's done. And in one of them, he's got like 15 of himself in one scene, uh, but it looks seamless and you can't even tell. So the guy does some fantastic work, like I said, right now, $25, uh, which is arguably, I think, the, probably the most affordable deal in town. And he'll do a promo shot for you, whether it's live or if you need some professional band shots done. So get at him, Jason Rota Photography. Look him up on Facebook. The information is right there on the screen. Uh, the Submission Academy, Jane and Steve Poulin, uh, they're located at Dundas and Egerton. Two of uh, my really good friends, Steve and I, go way back a long time. And it's been great to see this guy's school really blossom from where it was a couple of years ago to where it, w it is now, which has truly become the premier jiu-jitsu school here in London. And I know our listeners may be thinking, you know, jiu-jitsu, well, you know, that might not be something that I'm interested in because most people associate it with a barbaric sport like MMA. But truth is, it's actually a really fun and innovative way to, to not only get into sh in shape, but to build some confidence through hard work. And they've got a great kids program, too. Um, and I think more importantly, they do offer and will 
uh, work with a program with you based on exactly what you're looking to do. So some people come in and they just want to get fit, they just want to get in shape. Other people come in and, and they want to compete uh, and they want to kick ass at competitions and, and they offer pretty much every level. They will tailor a program based on what you want to do and right now every uh, tournament that their competitors are entering, they're walking away with gold and silver medals left, right and center. So definitely uh, a great school, go and check them out. I encourage you to walk in and talk to Steve. Uh, you'll find out within the first couple of minutes that he's uh, one of the most personal and funny people that I've ever met in my life, and he runs a great school. Check him out, the Submission Academy. I uh, also need to thank Scotty Finlayson, a.k.a. Scotty Fairmont at FullColorCards.ca. If you happen to be in the market looking for some business cards, this is the guy that you want to see. Just a rad dude, does some great work, uh, worked in graphic design for years and years and years, branched off. Now he's doing his own thing. You probably see him on uh, the patio, either at Barney's or you see him at the Poacher's Arm. He plays in the Fairmonts. You guys play in the Djembe. Uh, just a rad dude. I really like working with him. Did, did some great work for me. Uh, and he will hook you up, believe me. So if you're in the, in the market rather for some business cards, get at him, fullcolorcards.ca. I need to thank Gary Begner at Shirt for Brains uh, Custom Screen Printing. Gary is uh, over yonder right now, actually he's in Italy with his, uh, his lovely wife. They're on a two week trip and uh, he wanted me to send his regards to our listeners because normally Gary is one of the co-hosts here at London Indie Underground. He did a great uh, job with those Lackey shirts. He though. certainly did a great job. He, he did the, the shirts for Cam Lackey. He did some shirts for Wasted Potential. Um, a number of bands actually that have reached out to him recently as a result of this podcast, which has been great. And I know... Uh, Sometimes maybe a little bit to his chagrin because he does operate out of his own garage and he's a busy, busy guy because he's got a lot of projects that are coming in. But that said, it's his passion. It's what he, what he loves to do. And, uh, you know, he's got some of the great pr greatest prices in town. So does a lot of work for me. He has over the years. Uh, always been satisfied. So great guy to connect with. Uh, make sure you check him out. Shirt for Brains, which is an awesome name. <laughs> Shirt for Brains. I mean, come on. You couldn't get a, <laughs> think of a better name for that. And last but not least, I do need to thank Manson Keeler. Uh, at Manson Tattoo, which is at uh, Dundas and English Street. Uh, Manson and I recently ventured into a, uh, a joint venture, I guess, where he's uh, doing some work for me that we're going to be documenting with 331 Productions. Uh, he's going to be he's been performing some work on me, and I've seen a number of the uh, the products that he's done, and uh, I was really truly impressed. And I got to tell you, I've never had a better tattoo experience before going into a shop and felt more comfortable and more importantly he was able to take my ideas conceptually and put them exactly into what I was looking to do and the results so far have been sterling and I can't wait to get in and do some more work with him so if you happen to be in the market for some tattoo work uh, definitely a guy that you want to go see Manson, Ke uh, Manson Keeler rather at uh, Manson Tattoo Dundas on English Street and I gotta thank Summer Camp Productions and Brandon Eady who's normally sitting on the chair over here but uh, he's sitting uh, on the back bench right now, he was usurped out of his seat. Um, so those that have been following along London Indie Underground will know that Brandon recently posted up that he is looking for, for bands um, to fill in and to support some of the bills that he's putting together. Those that have not been following along will, and perhaps not know that Brandon has been uh, very active in this community for a long time as a promoter and putting together a number of shows and, and single-handedly uh, for a number of years, in my opinion, uh, was the driving force behind the, the indie movement here. And, uh, you know, I'm really appreciative of him coming in and lending his efforts to what we're doing. <laughs> oh, we're not just doing this because he's here. Being a part of London Indie Underground. And then, uh, and that said, um, every Friday from 3.30 to 6 p.m., Brandon uh, and myself are at CHRW Radio 94.9 FM, where we do broadcast our show, and we support all the local bands from this area. So if you're on a band, send us your music, London Indie, UG at Hotmail.com. Attach us a couple of MP3s, and we want to jam your stuff. So thank you, Brandon. Whoa. And I want to thank the Unreal for coming into the studio today, gentlemen. Oh. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Great performance. <laughs> Looking forward to getting your new uh. stuff. <laughs> as soon as you get it, make sure you hit me up with it. And back to us. <laughs> I want to thank uh, everybody for coming down to the studio today. We've got uh, a little crowd that have formed on the other side, and, and you know, I ventured into the parking lot there between uh, after your performance, and Probably people were telling crowd. me that uh, that they were taking in your uh, your show. <laughs> I don't know that it's a huge crowd out there, but uh, I would say, say that we hey, definitely have some. It's an, impor it's an important. Large. <laughs> oh yeah, Baker's does. But I would suggest I got to you my that sharpie ready. <laughs> Oh, it's just joking. Anything else? <laughs> no, that's all. Okay. Cool. I would suggest that now that we do have an open door policy, we, uh, we would like to invite you into our home, and, and we would hope that you would join us for an evening of music and conversation. 
you know, I would would uh, have to apologize and say that there are times that you know maybe we're a bit lowbrow and, and colorful in our commentary, but uh, you know, our radio show is certainly uh, censored and. Uh, you know, we're really fundamentally, when it comes down to, we're all about promoting and uh, and supporting the scene as much as possible. So, thank you for tuning in to London Indie Underground. Once again, my name is Jimmy James. We're broadcasting live from the Vault Recording Studio, which is now at 5:32 Adelaide, not uh, 5:28. It was at 5:38, and we're at 5:32 now. Next door. Next door. Thank you. So we're going to end this off here with a little track from a band uh, that I'm very fond of. And uh, one of the members actually had joined us in CHRW studio, which is Kevin Kennedy. He and his wife, Jane Kennedy, came in uh, in support of their new album release for The Married. So we're going to end this thing off with the dyadics. This is Stay This Way on the London Indie Underground.